Would you like to learn how to make deliciously crafted mocktails? Well, today on WTF, we're going to be joined by special guest Aaron Wisniewski from Alice and the Magician to show us a sparkling cucumber lemonade, citrus chocolate coffee, blackberry iced tea, and a watermelon grapefruit spritzer. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry, and with me here is Aaron Wisniewski of Alice and the Magician. How are you, Aaron? I'm great. Um, thanks for having me here, Janie. Yeah, obviously mm. we've known you for a bunch of years and we love Alice and the Magician. But for the folks watching at home, who is Alice and the Magician? What do you guys do? Um, Alice and the Magician is a uh, flavor design company. Uh, and everything that we do is based around one single fact, mm -hmm. that 85 to 90% of our perception of flavor, our experience of flavor comes from smell, um, not as much taste as we think. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we do to enhance the flavor of both alcoholic beverages and non-alcoholic beverages through the art and science of aroma uh, is create two products that you can add to your drink um, during making it, after, and then while you're drinking it as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we have these products here um, at Modernist Pantry. So we have these mists and we have the elixirs. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what's the difference? This one looks like a perfume, mm -hmm. this one looks like drops. What do they do and how, how do they work? Sure, um, hopefully you don't mind if I get a little nerdy about no, it. No, we love nerdy. Um, so like I said, we're really focused mm -hmm. on scent. You know, mm -hmm. like what is scent and how does it uh, transform your beverage experience? Mm -hmm. um, now your sense of smell is actually very unique compared to your other senses. Okay. Um, it's the only one of your senses that has a direct connection to the memory and emotion section of your brain. Mm. So it's a really important part of your eating or drinking right. experience. Um, and the second is, uh, like I said, about 85 to 90% scientifically of your flavor experience comes from smell. Mm. Um, now a lot of people don't know this, but when you're um, tasting food or drink, you're actually doing it in two distinct ways. Okay. One, before you put the food um, in, in your mouth or before you take your first sip, mm -hmm. you're smelling through your nose and that's called um, orthonasal olfaction. Cool. The second part is when you're actually eating or drinking, you're experiencing flavor inside your mouth and that's called retronasal olfaction. Mm -hmm. So we developed two lines of products to work for both of those types okay. of flavor. The mists go on the drink, just like a regular garnish, except mm -hmm. it's kind of like a garnish on steroids. Right. So before you even take your first sip, mm -hmm. you're experiencing tons of aromatics and depth and complexity, and it's signaling to your brain what flavors you're gonna find in the drink. Amazing. The second product, our elixirs, are drops that you add to the drink as you're making it. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can add them after also. Um, but what this does is it mixes in with the drink mm -hmm. and really takes the flavors that are there and turns the volume way up on them, mm -hmm. but also adds a lot of flavors um, that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do easily at home or even in a restaurant or a bar. Yeah, it's incredible. I think the science behind it is so interesting. And what I really love is that I know you originally founded Alice and the Magician as a cocktail company, mm -hmm. but we're really excited to be able to do an episode here today that's all about mocktails because it's definitely growing in popularity. More and more people are enjoying non-alcoholic beverages, but I think sometimes um, the mocktails fall a little flat, right? So, we, so mm -hmm. we wanna give people some exciting new recipes that they can try with your products to really bump up that experience. So we have four items that we're going to show you today and Aaron's going to walk you through how to do each recipe and why exactly they work and why they are so good. All right, so let's talk about maybe, we'll just do them in order. What is the first cocktail or mocktail that we're going um, to cover? So first we're going to do a mocktail that has a lot of freshness and green notes in it. Um, and it's a nice balance of cucumber and pineapple. Mm. Um, as you mentioned, Janie, um, the days of Diet Coke and bitters and soda being the only option for mm -hmm. a mocktail are over. Um, there are so many options if you want a low or a no alcohol drink. Um, and using aromatics and, and kind of playing with um, textures and temperatures and flavors through science mm -hmm. allows us to get the same type of um, flavor experience and same mouthfeel that you'd get from an alcoholic drink, mm -hmm. um, but with no alcohol. Um, so. Let's start with our first cocktail. Um, the first ingredient in our first cocktail is a cucumber simple syrup. 
So we're going to add a little bit of cucumber simple syrup here. And we both keep saying cocktail. Well, it's mocktails. <laughs> and it's mocktails, exactly. So this cucumber mm -hmm. um, simple syrup is unique because um, you can't cook cucumbers. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, but if you yeah. cook cucumbers, they tend to get overly vegetal and they're not very fresh anymore. Mm -hmm. So what's unique about this is you make the simple syrup and before it's completely cooled, you blend in fresh cucumbers with the skins and that does a few things. One, the syrup itself acts as kind of a matrix to trap some of that fresh cucumber flavor. Mm -hmm. The skins give it a really beautiful green color and the little bit of bitterness you get from the skins act as a tiny bit of almost imperceptible bitterness in the cocktail that gives you the impression that there might be alcohol in there. Um, so it doesn't taste like alcohol, but it mm -hmm. gives it a more robust structure. I really like that. The second thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of pineapple juice. Now, making a good mocktail is really about balancing um, textures and flavors. Mm -hmm and highlighting the aromatics. So the pineapple does give a little bit of additional sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, it gives an additional um, bit of mouthfeel, and that mouthfeel is something that you do get from alcohol in, um, uh, in traditional cocktails. You can replace it with something like pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, we have lime juice. Acidity is the backbone to any good cocktail, mocktail, juice, anything. So it's really important to have the acidity in there and also balance the sweetness of the other ingredients. Um, and then our final ingredient too is, um, this is a, um, a carbonated cocktail, so we're gonna add some spring water now, and then a little bit later on, we're gonna carbonate it in the, um, in the siphon. Very cool. Now before we do that, and even before we add ice and chill this down, we're gonna add a little bit of Thai green elixir. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is a combination of, um, uh, lime leaf, ginger, mm. lemongrass, galungal root, Thai basil, mint, and cilantro. Wow. I'm gonna add four drops. This is very strong, it's pretty potent, so you usually don't need more than two, three, four drops at the most. Mm -hmm. um, it was inspired by um, uh, some culinary travels that I was doing in southern Thailand and exploring the fresh markets there mm -hmm. for creative inspiration and came across a all green market there and these were all the herbs wow. just fresher than you could ever possibly imagine. And I can smell them from here, like the aroma is wafting through the room right now. It's very green, it's mm -hmm. very fresh, and what I like about this one is even mm. though I listed all those ingredients, um, not one of them really stands out as, as kind of like overpowering any of the others. Um, and so that is one of what I like about it. It just gives really, really fresh green aroma. Yeah, and one of the cool things about your products is that everything is small batch made in Vermont, you know, so it's not like commercial, you got it. It's really high quality ingredients made with love. Made with love, lots mm -hmm. and lots of love. Yeah. It's time to carbonate the cocktail. All right, so. here you go. Here you go. Ruby tracks. <laughs> Oops. Uh. So we're just gonna strain this in here. And one of the reasons that carbonation is so important uh, in mocktails is texture, right? The little tiny bubbles add a ton of texture and mouthfeel, um, and that can take the place of the texture and mouthfeel that you would get from a spirit. Hmm. Um, another reason is that carbonation does add just a tiny bit of um, carbon dioxide, of CO2, and that little bit of um, acidity that is naturally found in carbon dioxide gives it some more uh, structure and balance as well. Oh, that's really interesting. So we're gonna release some of the excess CO2 in here. And then charge it one more time and that will allow the liquid inside to absorb as much carbonation as possible. That's one, then. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna set that there for just a moment while we get some fresh ice for our new cocktail. Um, and once again, the colder it stays, the more the carbonation will stay absorbed and it will provide a much, much richer mouthfeel. Hmm. And also will taste a lot more refreshing. That's cool. And just for the folks who wanna do this at home, just a reminder that you are working with CO2 chargers in this case and not the N2O chargers. 
Mm. Excellent point. Mm. You will get a very different experience. <laughs> a very creamy drink. Mm. Okay, so we're ready. Yay, exciting. Can you smell that? Mm-hmm. And we'll strain it one last time right into our finished glass. That smells amazing already. And you always want to keep just a little bit of space at the top. You don't want to fill it all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. And what that does is leaves headspace. And the headspace is important because that's where your nose goes mm -hmm. um, while you're sipping the cocktail. Oh. And we can fill that space with more aroma. Okay. So we have an English cucumber aromatic here that's really fresh, really green, and mm -hmm. it takes that kind of delicate, fresh cucumber um, flavor and just, like I said, turns the volume way up on it. Okay. So two to three mists, about uh, five or six inches away from the glass, and then all of that space in there is mm -hmm. filled with cucumber aroma. One little garnish in there. That looks amazing. There you go. Yeah. You yes. That is so tasty. That is so good. Oh, I didn't. I didn't take the pause to sniff first. My apologies. <laughs> yeah, it smells like you put a whole cooked cucumber in here. Oh, it is so good. I could drink this all day. But we have three more cocktails to go, so I will not drink this all day. So we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back with our next mocktail. All right, before we get started with our next mocktail, I just wanna quickly mention, if you want more unique ingredients and recipes, remember to subscribe and ring the bell, that way you'll get notified of our episodes when they come out. All right, Erin, what is the second drink that we have today? The second drink we have today is a very simple, very decadent, very luxurious take on a, uh, a mocha. Ooh, um, okay. So we're using some of my favorite ingredients, coffee, which is already really aromatic, mm -hmm. and it's very complex, and mm -hmm. it's got some sourness, it's got bitterness, it's got a lot going on. We're adding a little bit of um, chocolate cashew milk, and we're using chocolate cashew milk because I really like experimenting with different types of milk substitutes. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily because I don't like dairy, um, but each has its own unique flavor, and I like the slight nuttiness in cashew milk. Cool. Um, and then, of course, chocolate coffee, mm -hmm. classic pairing. Yes. Uh, and then another mm -hmm. element we're gonna add in there is citrus. Okay. So the two things we're gonna do with aromatics today are we're gonna um, bring out the chocolate and the nuttiness without increasing sweetness too hmm. much. Okay. And we're also gonna accent it with a lot of citrus. Well, so that's exciting. think of this as a dessert cocktail with uh, much less of the sugar in it. Sounds great. So this can be done hot or cold. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about uh, fireside cocktails today, so we're gonna do it warm. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing we're gonna do is take some freshly brewed coffee. And you can use any type of coffee you'd like. Even instant coffee will actually okay. work well for this because we're gonna bring out so much in um, the aromatic portion mm -hmm. um, that you can start with almost any different coffee. Okay. Now our our cashew chocolate milk here. Not too much of that. Just to give it, once again, extra body, extra flavor, and a little bit of the richness from the fat in the cashew milk. Mm -hmm. um, gives that mouth feel, that mouth coatingness that sometimes you would get from alcohol. Yeah. Um, and then finally, we're just gonna put a tiny bit of sugar in the form of simple syrup. Is that regular simple syrup or is that gom syrup? This is gom syrup. And what is gom syrup, Aaron? Jenny, that is an excellent question. Why don't we consult a modernist pantry expert? We have one right here. Thank goodness. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's uh, so gom syrup is actually pretty simple. It's just a slightly thickened version of simple syrup. It gives a little bit more mouthfeel to something like this. So you have the cashew milk, you have the coffee, and then the simple syrup also adds to the mouthfeel so you're not getting any extra water. <laughs> And that's our special appearance from Scott. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> All right. So once again, mouthfeel huge, um, but without adding too much fat to make it, uh, you know, cloying or too much sugar to make it cloying. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got our raw ingredients, we're going to add a little bit of citrus elixir. Now the citrus citrus elixir is made of a number of different kinds of citrus, including wild oranges from uh, the Dominican Republic, um, Sicilian lemons, um, grapefruit from a number of places uh, all over the world. And it's very, very potent, but it's also very fresh and juicy citrus. So think of this as like 
a citrus twist times 100. Um, so we're gonna add uh, three drops. Once again, this is very potent, and you, although you can um, add a lot and get a lot of citrus, it might throw the cocktail out of balance if you add too much. Mm. So, we're just gonna give it a little bit of a mix to incorporate all those flavors. Um, something like this that does have um, a little bit more uh, viscosity, a little bit more texture. You wanna make sure that you incorporate all the flavors so every sip is the same. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we're going to pour it into our. So every time you put the elixir in, I just, standing over here, just get a face full of like the aromatics. It's great. Mm -hmm. Once again, we're gonna leave a little bit of headspace at the top of the drink, and that's where the extra aroma will live. Um, the aroma we're gonna use this time is chocolate cake mm. aromatic mist. And so if you could picture um, as much as you can, a warm, gooey chocolate cake that just came out of the oven. Mm. That's what this smells like. And so adding the aroma to the top of this drink will increase the, um, the perception of sweetness. Even mm. though the drink isn't that sweet, it will taste a lot sweeter and it will feel richer and more decadent with this chocolate cake aroma. Hmm. Do you want to do a before and after? I do. I was about to All say, right. I was like, can I try it beforehand? Of course. I mean, it's already good because I love chocolate and coffee, so I, you can't go wrong with them. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And so now, there we go. Give it a try. It definitely smells way more chocolatey already. I, I can smell it from here. Yeah, you're right. It suddenly tastes sweeter. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Mm. You can really, really, good. really trick your mind into think, yes. thinking something is sweeter than it actually is by aroma. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of time we see that in wine. Someone mm -hmm. who says they like sweet wine actually likes fruity wine. So all those okay. fruity flavors in the wine remind them of sweet fruit. So it actually tastes fruity to them. Oh, or that's it's so tastes sweeter to them. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to try the next one. So we'll be right back. All right, so we've done two amazing mocktails. I can't wait to see the third one. But first, I wanted to talk about this week's giveaway, which hopefully you're as excited about the Alice in Magician products as we are, and you want to try it for yourself. So you can enter to win a mist and an elixir of your choice by leaving in the comments below a cocktail that you want to use it with. I think that would be really great. I know we're all going to uh, be brainstorming after this. All right, so Aaron, what is the third mocktail that we are making today? Sure. So our first one is really light and refreshing. Mm -hmm. Our second one was much richer and heavier. Yep. And now we're going to go kind of in the middle and we're going to play with another element that we haven't played with before in mm -hmm. mocktails, which is tannin. In this mm -hmm. case, tannin from tea. Um, so the first ingredient here um, is some Earl Grey tea. Um, now Earl Grey is just a really good middle of the road tea. Mm -hmm. It's not too bitter. Um, it's got flavor, but it's not overpowering flavor right. like a smoky tea or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and what the tannin does and the bitterness does is it does another textural thing for us. The okay. astringency kind of like tannin in wine mm -hmm. um, mimics in a lot of ways the intensity of alcohol. And oh, so nice. it's just another layer of complexity and texture and mouthfeel um, that makes it really interesting to drink, mm -hmm. um, but also takes it a step away from just bubbly juice because right. that's one of the dangers of a mocktail, right? Mm -hmm. is like, you can call it a mocktail, but sometimes it's just juice and bubbles, yeah. which is great, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily make it a mocktail. So we want the depth and complexity and texture. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing that we did in the sweet cocktail, which is bring out the sweetness using aroma mm -hmm. without using sugar. Um, and then we're gonna add some really, really interesting fresh citrus aromas too. So Exciting. let's get started. Okay. First ingredient is the Earl Grey tea. So we're gonna add some of that and when you're brewing this too, um, you wanna make sure that you don't overbrew it. Brewing tea can be really delicate sometimes. You don't wanna yep. ex extract too much tannin and astringency. You wanna get just the right amount of flavor. So that's really important. Next, we made another gum syrup. In this case, it's a blackberry syrup. So you get a really nice blackberry flavor, nice blackberry color, just a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of that additional texture. Mm. And then we're also gonna add some fresh lemon juice. Now lemon juice works great in this recipe um, rather than lime juice because it has the citric acid without having a really, really forward flavor. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get most of the flavor from the tea and the blackberry and the citrus and the aromatics. So we don't wanna overpower the flavor. 
Next, this is baking spice elixir. Now the baking spice elixir has all of the things that you traditionally kind of associate with um, sweets and pastries. So vanilla and cocoa and tonka bean. So when you smell it, it smells like really sweet things, almost mm -hmm. like, like um, uh, vanilla cookies or chocolate chip cookies. Oh, okay. And when you add it to something like this with fruit, it takes, instead of fresh fruit, it takes on a kind of fruit pie quality too. So it's going to oh. increase your perception of sweetness and without actually adding sweetness to it. Um, so this we're adding about five drops. I might have done six in there, that's fine. Um, and then we're gonna chill it down with some ice before we strain it. Yeah. And I really like how it's complementing the fruit because I would have automatically gone to, oh, we'll put citrus in it because we have the blackberry, but I like how this is adding and not just enhancing. Yeah, and we kind of think about it in two ways. Do you want to take something that's already in there and turn the volume way up on mm -hmm. it? Or do you want to add another element in that might be either difficult to add in or you wouldn't want to add it in and dilute the cocktail? Mm -hmm. so there's a number of ways to think about it. In this case, we're complementing things that are already in there. And we're also going to add some elements that aren't. Neat. We're just going to give that a nice stir and chill this down. You can see that it maintains a really, really nice semi-transparent color too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, it definitely smells like cookies in here now. <laughs> so and with these wider glasses, you get less concentrated headspace. So sometimes the aromatics that you missed on top can fade a little bit more quickly. So don't be afraid to add them when you're halfway through the drink also. In fact, you can add these with every sip if you wanted to. Okay. Um, feel free to experiment. So this is Sicilian lemon. Um, this aromatic uh, is one of my favorite lemons that I've ever had in the entire world. Oh. Um, there's something about the lemons in Sicily, I can't say scientifically why they're so good, but they're so fresh, they're so bright, so juicy and so sweet smelling mm -hmm. without being sweet tasting. Mm -hmm. So this will add some of that um, really, really bright freshness. Balance everything out. Um, and then we're just gonna add one blackberry in there as a treat Ooh. for when you finish. This looks I great. Like all these look amazing. And I think, you know, if you go to any party or restaurant, be happy to have them. Is it weird because you sprayed the lemon? I feel like I can almost taste the lemon, mm -hmm. even though I'm, there's no lemon in there. And so but if so there's, good. your brain is really good at making connections too. So if you smell lemon and you taste mm. sweet and sour, yeah. your brain will think lemon. So you can really, really take some of the most exotic ingredients in the world, which is what we do. We are going to go around the world and find like, where are the best lemons? Mm. Where is the best lime leaf? Where is the best rosemary growing? Extract it in a really unique way mm. and concentrate it and then add it here. So um, it never goes bad. You don't have to go to the grocery store every yep. few days to get your garnishes, so it's a really convenient thing, too. Yeah, and I keep wanting to say this one's my favorite now, but every one that you make <laughs> is my favorite, so this is my third favorite. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back in order to, and we'll make our fourth mocktail. All right, and we're back, and we're about to dive into our final mocktail of the day. But you may have noticed that Aaron has not been measuring stuff. He's a master mixologist. A lot of us aren't, so if you want to get the full recipe, as always, they will be in the links in the description below, so you can make all of today's mocktails anytime you like. All right, now what is the final mocktail that we are going to make? Our final one is one of my favorites, um, and it's probably the, I would say, most peculiar out of the batch. Okay. And the reason is we're introducing a interesting ingredient to some pretty familiar ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really good end of summer cocktail. I mean, if, if you could picture like a white linen shirt drying on a clothesline on a farmhouse, mm -hmm. that's kind of the inspiration for this. Oh. So it's fresh watermelon juice, mm -hmm. it's fresh grapefruit, um, a little bit of citrus for some bite, and then the interesting ingredient is a tomato leaf elixir. Okay. Now, tomato, watermelon, grapefruit might not seem like what you would normally pair in a refreshing mm -hmm, cocktail, right. but there's some interesting scientific reasons they go well together. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever, and you can remember to kind of picking a tomato right out of the garden and you smell it, and you smell that really, really pungent fresh tomato smell, mm -hmm. um, I love that smell. And so mm -hmm. mixing that kind of tomato-y, garden-y, red fruit aromatic 
um, with some sweetness from the watermelon and the tartness from the citrus. Mm -hmm. It makes it really complex. It makes it a very kind of adult beverage, um, but it also has this great end of summer refreshing watermelon kick to it. All right, that sounds so, wonderful already. Let's try a little of that. So we're gonna start with some fresh watermelon juice. You can buy watermelon juice, um, but really nothing compares to fresh watermelon juice. And there's a number of ways to do this. Um, you can do it in a blender, you can do it with a juicer. Um, we're also going to add a little bit of grapefruit. Grapefruit is great because it's a, you know, it's a citrus, so it has acidity. And once again, acidity is really important for balance. Mm -hmm. um, but grapefruit also has some bitterness and some astringency. And so that helps give it, um, or it steers us away from the bubbly juice kind of um, um, problem that you can run into when trying to make mocktails. Mm -hmm. And finally, a little bit of lemon juice to give it a little bit more uh, acidity too. And once again, acidity is just that lip smacking, that balance, mm. uh, and that's really important. So the tomato leaf elixir, it really, if you smell, and that smells just like tomatoes oh, out of the garden. Yes, it does. So I'm going to put five drops in. Um, you can play around with it and figure out exactly how much tomato uh, flavor you want in yours. I like mine a lot. And this is also something that you could put in savory drinks like um, virgin or alcoholic uh, um, uh, Bloody Marys. Nice. Okay, so we're going to chill that down. Mm -hmm. Now, you could drink this just like this and it would be pretty good. Okay. But what's going to really make it come alive, what's really going to give it the brightness and the texture and the liveliness in your mouth, and also bring some of that tomato, uh, tomato leaf aromatic, is our good friend the siphon there. All right. So we're going to carbonate this drink. Um, and that will give us the texture and the brightness that we're really looking for. So that's nice and chilled down. And that's just like a really pretty color too. It really is. And I think when you're, I think for people who are excited to try these products, are there any general guidelines that you would recommend to them in terms of, okay, which one should I pair with what? I think that's always the big question. How do I use it? That's a great question. And the first thing I'll say is there are no wrong answers. Mm -hmm. If you were playing with something like lemon juice, you can add too much lemon juice and mm -hmm. it won't taste good or you can add not enough. When you're talking about aromatics, if you have a good base, like a good foundation of mm -hmm. sweet and sour, you can add anything you want okay. and it's never gonna be gross. All right. <laughs> um, and I think you can think about it in terms of what might grow next to each other in a garden or in okay. a place. Mm -hmm. um, and what might you pair if you were cooking in your kitchen? You know, like before when we paired the baking spices with some berry fruit. Mm -hmm. That might not be intuitive for a mocktail or a cocktail, mm -hmm. but if you're baking a pie, Absolutely, you're going to probably mm, put vanilla in it. So mm. um, we're also going to add just a little bit of water um, before we carbonate it, just a touch. Just make it a little bit lighter. If you've never had sparkling watermelon juice, you're in for a real treat. I mean, I'm sure you have, but... It is, I love I love watermelon juice. That is one of my favorite mm -hmm. things. Usually I don't like to add grapefruit to things, but this looks delicious. So I'm excited to try it. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't like grapefruit, if mm -hmm. you can just put a little bit in, and you won't even necessarily taste the grapefruit that strongly, mm -hmm. but the, the sourness will come through it and will give a nice balance. Thank you. You're welcome. So to, in order to get the most The most carbonation absorbed, we're going to use one charger. And then we're going to release the excess carbon dioxide and charge it one more time. And this will make it really fresh and bubbly. And since it's cold, it will absorb quite a bit of carbonation. And release it one more time. There we go. Right, and I'm just going to add a couple lone ice cubes to make sure that it doesn't get warm as we're sipping it outside.
And this one does not have an aromatic mist, but we are going to garnish it with a little bit of fresh grapefruit. And what we're going to do is just take the skin part of the grapefruit and rub it around the outside of the glass mm -hmm. and drop it in just like that. Ooh. And there you go. Cool. You do get like a little whiff of tomato in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one's really good too. I'm sounding like a broken record, but uh, I, I wish I can just drink all of these right now. So these are super good. Well, thank you so much, Aaron, for showing us these new recipes. And if you stick around next week, we are going to be coming back with Aaron again in order to do our part two episode all about how do you use mist and elixirs in cocktails. So definitely stick around for that. And from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. Now you say your name. I'm Aaron Wisniewski <laughs> from Allison the Magician. Thanks for having me, Janie.